Hello, my fellow comic book collectors, it's Alan, the Comic Collector Geek, and I'm sorry. First of all, I have to say that because originally I was planned to show my top 50 comics in my collection today, but I instead did a, I want to do this review of The Last Airbender on Netflix. It's really um, important for me to do these while, you know, my mind is still kind of thinking about it and, uh, you know, it's fresh on the mind. So uh, next week <laughs> will be the top 50. So let's get into it. Um, if you're not familiar with The Last Airbender, basically if you watch any episode, it explains the whole story in that uh, opening credits, where what happened was uh, there's a world of different benders, air, water, fire, and earth. And each... Uh, can manipulate those elements. And um, there's the Avatar, who is the master of all of those elements. And he brings unity to the uh, world, I guess. And But a hundred years ago, the Avatar disappeared. And, uh, you know, uh, this is that story of him returning and bringing unity back to the world. So, that's the overall synopsis of the story. That um, basically what happened was this airbender, he uh, was just a boy and all the airbenders get wiped out by the Fire Nation. And uh, he, however, was not included in that massacre because he had flown off when on his sky bison and basically got frozen in ice for a hundred years. And if you watch the original Airbender uh, cartoon series, it's quite good, actually. Um, very much worth watching because uh, they really get into all the characters and all the motivations and and um, really uh, build up a story of the way it's done. It's like it's very episodic, but it, there's an overarching theme or, or story that's happening. And then you're gradually getting towards that big end point. Um, where uh, Aang has to fight the Fire Lord. And that's ultimately the way the cartoon series goes. And, and this Netflix series is going to go the same way, obviously. But they don't have <laughs> the same number of episodes to tell the big story. And that was one of the problems that happened with the movie when they came out with the Avatar The Last Airbender movie, that uh, they tried to do it all in one movie and contain a full season in one movie and it's really hard to do that without skipping a lot of content <laughs> you know there's so many things that happened and so much character development that can happen over 20 30 episodes that you can can't really summarize into one movie but netflix you know had a bit of an advantage in this way that they did it over eight episodes so the first season of the original cartoon series is being summarized in eight episodes of the live action. So they can do a, a little bit more because they have eight hours to work with almost. It's like almost full eight hours of content. So, you know, that's much more than a one hour, one and a half hour movie. Um, so how did they do in terms of summarizing and also telling something a little bit unique, a little bit new um, in terms of The Last Airbender? Well, I don't want to give spoilers, <laughs> but it is different than the, the cartoon series. Now, I'm going to kind of divide my criticism or critique of The, of the Last Airbender, Netflix, um, into four things, like the casting, the story, the CGI, and just overall feeling of, it, of, the, of the series. Um, first of all, let's get into the casting. So... You know, when you do live action, one of the reasons you do live action, especially with the Avatar, is uh, you want to see what those characters would look like if they were real, if they were people instead of cartoons. <laughs> um, and that's actually a good thing and bad thing. Because in, with cartoons, you can usually, especially anime, you can kind of go over the top. You can be over dramatic, and it's okay to do that when you're a cartoon. And sometimes that gets lost when you try to do it in live action. It just doesn't play that well. 
And I think Netflix was smart in uh, kind of toning down a lot of those overreactions and over dramatic uh, behavior. Um, but did they choose the right people for who you would kind of think what the cast should look like? So I'll get into them. So it's the main characters are Aang. And Aang is the little boy that's the last airbender. And he looks the part, the guy that they chose, good actor, good choice for Aang. Uh, Katara is uh, his, well, okay, I won't spoil, <laughs> but uh, she's like the, the female waterbender. And uh, another good casting choice, Ahsoka, Ahsoka. I find him a little bit boring, but uh, <laughs> but I think he actually was a good choice, the actor that they pick for Ahsoka. Uh, then there's Azula who I thought was totally wrong. <laughs> it just does not look the part to me. Um, kind of too round face. Like, uh, you know, I, I think of uh, Azula as being a little bit prettier um, and uh, just a little bit more narrow face, just because that's how the animation is. Uh, it doesn't quite look right. Um, and then we got uh, Zuko, who's the main rival to the airbender. And... Um, and I think he is actually a really good choice. He, I, at first, I didn't really kind of, I didn't really feel like he looked the part, but as he, as the series has progressed, like all episodes, I think the guy that they chose really good Zuko. Um, so I thought the casting, uh, and oh, Ira and June were the other two major characters that were kind of in a lot of the episodes. And I thought they were both good, um, very well casted. <laughs> I thought actually I thought it was funny because Iroh uh, is the guy from Kim's Convenience, which I thought was really funny, uh, Canadian actor, and um, it was funny to see him. But he did a great job. Um, so the acting, great, casting, great, um, except for as I said, Azula. I'm not uh, not a hundred percent sure why they chose that character. Um, now the next thing. Uh, I actually I'll I'll switch the order a little bit. I was gonna say story next, but I'll do CGI. CGI was fantastic. They did a really good job of um, getting the CGI spot on for this. You could tell that they they put a lot of money into this show. Um, there's a few scenes where um, Aang is flying, and it looks a little off, but that's generally a problem with flying, anyways. That there's a little bit of issues when people are flying. It always looks a little bit spotty. Um, but for the most part, it's really good. Um, the first couple episodes, I felt like it was too dark. <laughs> That'd be a complaint about the, maybe the, you know, and when you do things dark, it, you can hide bad CGI sometimes. Um, I'm not sure if that's why they did it, but I, that'd be my kind of complaint about the cinematography of the show. Um, but overall, I thought the CGI was good, and I thought the cinematography was generally good. I just thought certain scenes were a bit dark. I don't know why they were so dark. Um... And um, the story is really where I should be focusing my energies on in terms of how did the story translate um, and how did they tell the whole story in the lesser amount of time and did they do a good job of making that change? Um, and did they change some elements that maybe I agree with or disagree with? So... One of the things that they did and um, is they they took out the sexism. So um, Sokka is a very sexist carrier, character. And that's actually kind of one of his endearing qualities in a way. Because um, when they, in the original Airbender show, he was sort of a overly confident guy. And... Um, he actually, that's his arc, that he is this overly uh, arrogant, confident guy uh, who is a sexist, definitely a sexist. Uh, and um, he gets this sort of, he changes and he realizes that, you know, um, women have a role to play and uh, that he shouldn't be so arrogant. And he sort of does come, like he actually builds as a character. And he really uh, uh, grows. And he actually learns from female warriors on how to actually become a much more uh, effective warrior himself. So he goes through this really cool arc 
um, they took that out. They took that element of him out. They left the arrogance, but they left, they removed the sexism, which I actually think really was a central part of his character. Um, they made it work for the most part, to tell you the truth, but um, I kind of wanted them to leave it in. Like they, you know, sometimes they kind of like PC everything, make it too politically correct, where in a way um, you lose some of the, the, uh, the, the the richness of the character where you know you kind of people should be flawed and you know it's it's the flaws that make us who we are but it's also the flaws that give us the story and the motivation to go to the next level where we can actually become better as people so I felt like that was a bit of a miss but they they actually did a pretty good job on the character um one problem though um was on a different character where they actually kept um, maybe a bit of like they were added something that wasn't there. So originally um, uh, Azula who is um, uh, Zuko's sister. So um, the main nemesis guy uh, He's the prince of the fire lord And the fire lord is the main bad guy the big bad guy if you're gonna do like levels um, and he's the one that's you know Dominating the world of uh, this this uh, story and he's trying to take over all the other nations but he has two children he has uh, Zuko which is the boy and he has Azula which is the girl and uh, in the original story um, uh, Zuko uh, is this boy who really wants to earn his father's respect and is always kind of second fiddle to his sister his sister is the perfect one. She's the one that can not only manipulate fire, but she can actually use lightning, <laughs> which is, wow. She's like a prodigy, and everyone's like praising her, and uh, Zuko is kind of in the shadow of his sister, and his just sister is younger than him, so it's even like more of a embarrassment. And so he's like wanting to be the heir to the throne. He wants to be the prince that will rise up and be the, you know, the next king, but he's really... In the shadow of his own sister and um, he actually goes off on his journey to kind of prove himself he's actually banished because his father like has no respect for his son and they actually have a duel where his father burns his face and so um, this character is basically wanting to earn his father's respect and you know is gone off to find the avatar as a way of earning his father's respect but his sister was really the one who has all the father's respect and love and and he's in the shadow of his sister so um in this version that his story is the same but his sister is sort of played as if she's trying to earn her father's respect too which doesn't play right it doesn't seem right <laughs> it kind of bothers me um and actually in the original story she didn't really come into play until season two they brought her in very early into this avatar series which i thought was in a way a mistake i think they should have waited till a potential season two uh to bring her in because um it's 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 a nice little reveal that happens at the very end of season one uh in the original series so i thought that was kind of a hit or a bit of a miss with uh this netflix one um but Overall, they actually do a pretty good job of um, character development. Uh, you actually feel like uh, there is that, you know, th th I think the story for The Last Bit Airbender is just so strong that it's really hard to mess it up. <laughs> it's really hard. And uh, Netflix, even though they try to do a few weird things, uh, for the most part, the story is so strong that uh, things carry through fairly well. Um, and actually strongly recommend this story uh as or this series to watch because it has been done really really well um i i enjoyed it uh, more in each episode so the first episode i thought was okay second episode i thought was a little bit okay as well but then it got better and better with each episode and, and you really kind of feel for the characters and you really 
you know, really appreciate their acting skills and you can see that their relationships are building and it's really well done. So um, overall, I actually strongly recommend uh, watching um, Netflix's uh, uh, The Last Airbender. So it's definitely worth watching. Uh, I'm a big fan of the original series. I watched it a couple times, actually. Um, so it's um, it's good to see that this has been done correctly. Uh, it kind of... Uh, I mean, I thought the movie was a little bit weak, but uh, this kind of balances that out. So uh, it's good that they finally were able to do a live action version of The Last Airbender that actually worked. <laughs> so uh, kudos for Netflix. Maybe this is a good sign of um, a change in their way of making things. Um, and uh, yeah, I was very happy with uh, with the show. Um, I'd love to hear what other people felt about the show. What did you think of of the casting and uh, of the CGI and of the story. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments below. If you enjoy this content, please give me a thumbs up. And thanks again for watching. Bye for now.